This video was brought to you by Elbilmerk, a bedroom planner, storing by Ken Power and Bill Componenter. Yo, what's up? Today we're going to do a degradation test and as requested from you guys, we now have a car with LFP battery. This is Tesla Model 3 SR plus 60 kilowatt hour. It's from 2022, so it's two years old. It has 60,000 kilometers on the odometer. Maybe not ideal, I need to find something with 100,000 kilometers, but this is close enough. So we always want to know how much degradation do we have on these LFP batteries? They're supposed to have low degradation. So yeah, let's find out. I have charged the car to 100% now. This has the, the 18 inch wheel caps, whatever you call it. And then initially I wanted to try some, uh, uh, is the only bird watcher? I'm not sure. But I wanted to try a Velo, but for some reason when I connect the Avilo box to the OBD port, it doesn't light up. I try to uh, go in the app uh, or the website, whatever, it says connection lost. Uh, I don't know, I tried every possible solution it doesn't doesn't work but the regular will be dealing works so i don't know what's up with that so that's a bummer we cannot test a wheel for you guys who don't know what the heck is this this is a battery tester device it will do basically what i do like a ninja but you don't have to be a ninja you just use the app or the, the service and then it will measure the degradation for you and actually takes in lots of parameters like battery temperature and so on so we just have to okay skip that part but uh let me show you now what it looks like. It finished charging not long time ago. I don't want to stay here too long because it might have a slight drain when it's stationary, but at least it's connecting. Yeah, okay. But you see here, 57 kilowatt hour nominal full pack. When it was new, I measured 56.9 kilowatt hour with losses. So you'll see how much we get out of this battery. And then if we go here to um, software, you see that, yeah, 61K on the odometer. LRW, this is from China, and then uh, I'm not sure here, okay, whatever, uh, whatever, it's not too important, so we will just uh, prepare now and start doing the test. Oh yeah, before I start, you see the owner here, he has a sexy knob, this is Model 3 pre-Highland, but look, the sexy knob, this is for Highland, I received it, I haven't tested it yet, so it comes in a nice package, that's the commander you connect for communication, and here it is. Wait, let me take it out. Oh, I like the wrapping. Okay, so it fits Highland. A Highland has a slightly different uh, center console. So yeah, I need to test this. I don't have the opportunity to test it. I don't have a Highland at my disposal yet, but uh, Mashku still has one. So I have to uh, test it on his car before he sells it one day. He's actually thinking about uh, buying a, a rear-wheel drive Highland instead. So yeah, this is good stuff, man. And if you want to buy, the sexy button, even before I review it, uh, you can use my discount link. Wait a minute, I just uh, noticed now, <laughs> it's not this number we look at, it's this usual remaining is 55.1 kilowatt hour. Wait, uh, but we had 101% still, right? huh? Uh, is this an older variant with less energy available? No, I don't think so. SR plus 60 kilowatt hour has been unchanged for the longest time. But we, we have normal full pack is 57, but uh, no, I, wow, really? So based on the what I know now, we should get around 54.5 kilowatt hour after losses. Okay, let's find out then. Well, we're on the moon, so I just cruise at 90 on the speed, which is probably around 88 kilometers per hour, I haven't checked. But uh, eventually I'll speed up a bit, but in the beginning I'll just drive semi-slow. Uh, what is somewhat uh, important is that we don't hammer too hard, because then we get uh, more losses, hidden losses that we don't see in the numbers, so yeah. Uh, Sky my Tesla uh, is just uh, set now to record uh, the data. Also, we have energy and regenerate, and even stationary has been counted here, so we know all the numbers. It's a higher resolution, uh, more detail than what we get in the Tesla trip meter here. So now we just have to uh, sit and wait then for a couple of hours. We are now at Hama, we're getting low ish on the battery, 24% left. So now I just have to find the last turn right point before. Yeah, okay, now it says charging it. Okay, that's good. That's fine. We can always slow down. We don't have to go 100 all the way. So I just want to uh, make sure that we end up with as low juice as possible. So, so far we've done 300 kilometers and we have spent 42 kilowatt hour. And then we have some stats over here also. Uh, 13 kilowatt hour remaining energy, supposedly. And then that means that so far it seems like we can get 50 
uh, what is it, 54.8 kilowatt hour. We are almost done with the test now. We are down to 4%. So I'm getting close to yes home. And uh, yeah, during the drive, I've been playing around with the sexy knob. Actually, I haven't tested it properly. And I noticed that it has some nice feature. For example, if you press this button here, you can see that we have 28 degrees Celsius in the battery. And then you could precondition it. Uh, how is this again? This, but it says not available. Yeah, because the battery is too low. So, wait, is it? Active now, okay, no, it's not active. So you can configure this how you want it. So you see here we have region, and then you press this button here. You can change the region setting. No, uh, you can change the region setting. And then uh, the other corners, you also uh, wait for it to uh, go. Yeah, we have autopilot here. We have a steering wheel heater, and then this was uh, uh, what is this again? Oh yeah, mode, yeah. We want chill mode, actually. I mean, chill or sport, or I want to go to sport mode. Huh? And you can have several of these, uh, I'm not sure what you call them, uh, pages. If you scroll here, you have the next page here with wiper setting, and uh, you have speak, sound, uh, volume, and then um, here, for example, very convenient, dome lights on or off. Because so dome lights, uh, otherwise you have to go into the menu to uh, actually this is the screen that you find is kind of clumsy, and then also you can fold the mirrors. But also the middle here becomes the the press. But if you press this, then you can change between park and drive. But this would be useful if <laughs> you have Highland and you don't want to deal with the swipe on the screen. You can actually use this as a gear shifter. Some cars they actually have a gear shifter here. But look, this feature I didn't know it existed. Or uh, you can. Uh, how is this again? You can rotate. Wait, there, there, okay. If you press this, wait, no, no, there, there. Here, you can adjust the passenger seat, and you can either do it by pressing these buttons. Look at this. No, no. no. Okay, here you can go forward. What? What? Huh? Oh, you can also use this uh, rotation here. Man. That is really useful for me to adjust the passenger seat from the driver's seat. And Tesla, they still don't have that option to do it in the screen. Um, many, many other cars allow you to do that. And Tesla, they could have fixed this, but... So yeah, get this. Get the sexy button, you know. The sexy button fills a the gap. They, they make features that Tesla doesn't bother making. So you can get, uh, you know... They, they make Tesla great again. That's what they do. <laughs> okay, well, I had to focus on the degradation test also here. We are now home with 0% left and then the car reports 55 kilowatt hour used. But if you look at more accurate numbers here at Skyma Tesla, you see that, okay, we are now at minus uh, percent here. Um, it was 54.5 kilowatt hour when I was driving, but I didn't feel like stopping down the road. So I just stopped at home. So, but then we could count at 54.5 kilowatt hour, but we also have to count stationary, spend a little bit stationary. So that means that, okay, we will count 54.6 kilowatt hour. But you see, initially it uh, reported uh, 55.1. So the 0.5 kilowatt hour that we lost is actually heat loss that is not measured anywhere here. And that's why the battery heats up, but it's not that much. You know, half kilowatt hour is as expected. But uh, this is why we need to do a driving test because as the battery ages, it will have more and more internal resistance. And then that unknown variable, that unknown loss will be greater and greater. So yeah, based on this, we can then calculate the degradation. And also one, el one thing else to show you is that here, max discharge power is still 237 uh, kilowatt. That's still quite a lot, you know, you can still hammer it. And what I've seen before when I did the test on the relative new car is that even below zero, you have quite a big buffer. Um, I'm not sure how much we get. I'm not going to explore it now, but um, yeah, here, by the way, yeah, it, it reports 2.5 kilowatt hour remaining below zero. We don't want to count that because most people, they don't drive below zero. They drive maybe to zero and then they plug in. Well, we're all good. We are charging now on 11 kilowatt AC at 4% already, but um, I'm going to show you something here. You see, odometer is 61428. 
this trip meter was when the car was new and it was reported to um, spend over 10 a little bit over 10 thousand kilowatt hour with 168 watt hour per kilometer this is a total mix of motorway summer winter you know whatever so that's pretty good the consumption but if you look at this number here 10,000 okay um Scamma Tesla reports lots of variables that uh, many other cars doesn't report for example it splits into DC and AC charge total and you see that uh, the owner has been a good boy he's been charging mostly on AC uh, not that much on DC wait what is this DC charge total, DC charge. Okay, I'm not sure what the heck is different here, but but you get an idea of what it, it has been, right? Mostly AC charge. DC charging tends to degrade the battery more. But if you take the AC and DC and add them together, you then get to shook me all night long. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you can then get around 13.5 uh, megawatt hour or, or yeah, 13,500 kilowatt hour. And that is a lot less than what this reports and then also here we also see a number here drive total which is in kilowatt hour so yeah based on this it looks like we have around three kilowatt uh, three megawatt hour or three thousand kilowatt hour that is lost and some people say yeah but that's how tesla hides the consumption you know they they're lying no this is actually most likely the the stationary consumption because uh, the owner he has a sentry mode on so okay you have to burn a little bit of electricity but you then get uh, basically you get the dash cam while you're stationary right and there's a bit of vampire drain of course but uh, also if you go further down here there is another variable i want to show you which is number of cycles normally i try to calculate number of cycles but i'm not sure what this is um, this is probably calculated internally. I don't think the car reports this number. So, uh, you know, the guy who makes Scamma Tesla, he probably just looks at how many kilowatt hour we charge or something and he divides it by some 50 kilowatt hour and then he gets this, this number. So it kind of makes sense, this 268. It doesn't sound like a lot of cycles, but uh, it should correspond. If you take this number and multiply by 50, you get around 13.5 megawatt hour. So, yeah. Um, Normally with other cars, what I do is that I look at uh, actually the, the range, my own range test and I look at the 90 and the 120 kilometers per hour range and then I take an average of those but I also have to consider winter consumption and then I try to figure out how far you can drive in a single charge and then I figure out roughly how many cycles it has. But based on the test today, I calculated that we have 4.2% degradation. I mean, that alone doesn't sound too terrible, but except for that, um, uh, when we also consider the number of cycles we have, then it, it hasn't drawn that many cycles, you know, it, like 60,000 kilometers. And also, because this car has pretty good range, then yeah. So actually, if we consider also number of cycles, then it doesn't become that great because I have a weird number I use, uh, which is uh, I take the degradation and I divide it by number of cycle, and then the lower the number, the better. So I get a number there, which is kind of weird, 15.7%. But compared to other cars, uh, like on top, we have less than 10%. And then here we have 15.7. So I feel like the Tesla, this LFE battery should have had excellent degradation, but it doesn't. So the big mystery here is how many kilowatt hour did this exact car have when it was new? Was it actually 56.9 kilowatt hour like I measured in some other cars or did it have less? And also did Tesla change the software so that we have less available energy? now than two years ago when it was new you know that's a big unknown here so this is the tricky part of uh, doing a degradation test on a car that constantly changes via software update <laughs> so but at least what i've tested now is that um, it doesn't seem to be that great for lfp battery my argument for lfp battery for the longest time was that oh it almost doesn't degrade well at least now it doesn't look that good so anyway i think that's gonna be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later